In this lesson, we're going to be using the converse of the Pythagorean theorem. The success criteria is I can explain the converse of the Pythagorean theorem. I can identify right triangles given three side lengths, and I can identify right triangles in a coordinate plane. Converse of the Pythagorean theorem. If the equation a squared plus b squared equals c squared is true for the side lengths of a triangle, if you remember the Pythagorean theorem, if we have a right triangle, then a squared plus b squared equals c squared, where a and b are the legs and c is the hypotenuse. In this example, we're going to tell whether each triangle is a right triangle. Well, what I'm going to do is I'm going to take my two shorter side lengths, and then I'm going to square each one and then add them up. And if that is equal to the square of the longer side length, which would be the hypotenuse, then I know it's a right triangle. And if it's not the same, then it's not a right triangle. So anyway, I'm going to do 9 squared plus 40 squared and see if that is equal to 41 squared. So 9 squared plus 40 squared and then 41 squared. Well, 9 squared is 81 plus 40 squared is 1,600. That's equal to 41 squared. Well, if you don't know that off the top of your head, you can just do it out. So 41 times 41, I get 41 and then 4 and 16. So this is going to be 1, 8, 6, 1. So 16, 81. Now, if I add up 1,600 plus 81, I get 16, 81 equals 16, 81. So because both of these values are equal, I know that this is going to be a right triangle. All right, now I'm going to try part B. And I will make some space. So my longest side is 24, and then my shorter sides are 18 and 12. So I'm going to do 18 squared plus 12 squared equals 24 squared. I'm going to zoom in here. So I know 12 squared off the top of my head is 144. 18 squared is going to be 324. You could have done that out if you wanted to know. And then 24 squared is going to be 576. And I'll do that out just to double check. So I have 24 times 24, 16, and then I get 9, bring down the 0, get an 8, and then a 4. So I get 6, 7, 1. Yep, this is true. So now you could also check for 18 squared. Um, hopefully, you know, 12 squared off the top of your head. So now I just want to see if these two numbers add up to 576. So if I add these together, I'm going to get an 8 my 1's digit, a 6, and then a 4. So this is saying that 468 is equal to 576. That is simply not true. So I'm going to reject this. And now I know that the red triangle right here is not a red triangle. And now we're done with example one. For this example, we're going to tell whether the points A, which is 1, 1, B, 3, 5, and C, 3, 0, form a right triangle. So I'm going to plot these points first. So I have 1, 1. Then I have 3, 5. Then I have 3, 0. All right, so now I'm going to draw a little triangle. Now, you might notice that I can't figure out the side length for this and this. Okay, I do know this side length. This is 1, 2, 3, 4, 5 units. I'm going to write that in. Now, I could figure out what these two side lengths are because I could draw a right triangle here and here and then a, another right triangle here and here. So I'm going to do that in different colors. So I'll do one in green. And then I'll do the other one in pink. So I've drawn my two right triangles, and I know that this side length is one, two, three, four units. So I'll draw that one in green. So four units. This one's two units. So if I use the Pythagorean theorem, I could figure out this missing unit. So this is going to be four squared plus two squared. Okay, so this one's going to be four squared plus two squared equals this side length, so actually I'm going to label my points. I didn't label them at the beginning like I should have. So this is A, B, and C. OK, 
Okay, so I know that 4 squared plus 2 squared equals the length of AB squared. So I'm just going to write AB squared. Okay, well, I can simplify this. 4 squared is 16, and then 2 squared is 4. So I know that AB squared is equal to 20. Okay. Now, if I wanted to solve for AB, what I have to do is take the square root of both sides. So if I took the square root of both sides, I get AB equals, well, 20 is not a perfect square. So I could try to estimate this if I wanted to, but I'm just going to leave this as the square root of 20 for now. Okay, so I know that this side length is the square root of 20. I could write it in the diagram, but it would get messy, so I'm just going to leave it right here. Now I'm going to do the same thing right here, okay? Well, I know that this is one unit. I'll write this in pink. So that's one unit, and then this one is two units. So what I can do is one unit squared plus two units squared, and that will give me the square of this side length, which is AC. So I'm going to do that over here. So 1 squared plus 2 squared equals AC quantity squared. And then I have AC, the side length AC squared. And that is going to equal, well, 1 squared is 1, and then 2 squared is 4. So this is going to be 5, which is equal to my AC squared value. Now I can take the square root of both sides, just the positive, because I can't have a negative side length. So I get the square root of 5 is equal to AC. All right, now I can use the Pythagorean theorem and figure out if AC squared, this side length squared, plus this side length squared, AB, is equal to CB squared, or BC squared. Anyway, I'm going to write that out. So I want to see if AB squared plus... AC squared equals BC squared. Okay, well, I know that the side length BC is 5 units, so this is going to be 5 squared. And then I know that AB is the square root of 20, okay? But if I'm squaring AB, that, that'd be like I'm squaring the square root of 20. So I'm going to write it out, but we can simply figure it out that the square root of 20 squared just simplifies to 20. And then same thing over here, the square root of 5 is the length of AC, so it's going to be the square root of 5 squared. Well, that's going to cancel as well, so I just get plus 5. And then 5 squared is 25, and I know that 20 plus 5 equals 25. So I do know, because of that, because this all is true, I should say, that this triangle is a right triangle. So right triangle. And once again, that's because when we found the side lengths of AB and BC and then added their squares, it's equal to the square of length BC, which is 5 units. So 5 squared is 25. And that's why this is a right triangle. And now we're done. For this example, you design a football play in which a player runs down the field, makes a 90-degree turn, and runs to the corner of the end zone. Your friend ran the play as shown, where each grid line represents 10 feet. Did your friend run the play correctly? So on the left, we have the diagram of the play on the football field, and then on the right, we just have it on a blank graph just to make it easier to write on. But anyway, we just need to figure out whether or not this angle is actually a right angle, and we can use that using the converse of the Pythagorean theorem. So similar to the last problem, I want to find these side lengths, but I can't just measure them because this is not one unit. This is more than a unit. One unit is either one unit up or one unit right or left or down. I can't go diagonal and call that one unit because that's not the same distance. Anyway, I can figure out this distance using the Pythagorean theorem. So I'm going to draw some triangles to allow myself to find all these side lengths. So I'll use different colors. First, I'll use blue. Then I'll use green. And then I will use pink. All right, so it's kind of hard to tell, but you can see that I have just very lightly drawn in these different uh, triangle dashes. Anyway, I will start with this distance right here. So I know that each space represents 10 feet, okay? So this is going to be one, two, three spaces, so it's going to be 30 feet. So 30 feet and 30 feet. 
Okay, so I'm gonna go over here and figure out D1. I know that D1 squared is gonna equal this side squared plus this side squared using the Pythagorean theorem, which I will write up here just as a reminder. A squared plus B squared equals C squared. And D1 squared is the hypotenuse of this right triangle that I wrote, so this is acting as my C squared. Anyway, D1 squared equals 30 squared plus 30 squared. Okay, well, 30 squared is 900. So I know that D1 squared is equal to 1800. And then if I square root both sides, I would get D1 equals the square root of 1800. All right, so I'm just gonna leave that right there. And now let's solve for D2. Doesn't matter, we could do D3 first, but I'll do D2 just because it's number two. So I'm gonna figure out the side lengths of this right triangle that we made in pink. So it's one, two, three, four, five spaces by one, two, three, four, five spaces. So five spaces means 50 feet. So it's gonna be 50 feet and 50 feet. So similar to distance one, I'm gonna do the same thing. I'm gonna do distance two squared equals 50 squared plus 50 squared, because those are my two legs of the right triangle, and then D2 squared would be the hypotenuse. Anyway, this is gonna be 2,500 plus 2,500 equals D2 squared, and then I get D2 squared equals 5,000, and then if I wanted to, I could square root both sides, and I would get D2 equals the square root of 5,000. Once again, for both of these, I'm not trying to simplify the square root because I know that these aren't perfect squares. So now I found D1 and D2. Now it's time to find D3. So over here, this is two spaces, so that's gonna be 20 feet. And then this one right here is one, two, three, four, five, six, seven, eight. So that's gonna be 80 feet. So down here, I'm gonna scroll. I can do D3 squared equals 20 squared plus 80 squared. Okay, well 20 squared is 400 plus 80 squared is 6400. And this is going to be, and I forgot to put my squared here. So now I have D3 squared equals 6800. And if I square root both sides, I get D3 equals the square root of 6,800. Once again, we're only taking the positive square root because we're dealing with distance. You can't have a negative distance. Anyway, now I need to figure out if my two shorter sides, D1 and D2, to see if their squares add up to the square of D3 because then that would prove that this is a right triangle. So I'm gonna try to do D1 squared plus D2 squared equals D3 squared and see if that's true. So I'll do that down here. So D1 squared plus D2 squared equals D3 squared. So I'm gonna plug in my values. For D1, I have the square root of 1800. So I have the square root of 1800. But you might know that the square root of 1800 squared is just gonna cancel into 1800. And then similarly for D2 squared, well, D2 is the square root of 5000. So if I square the square root of 5000, that's gonna turn into 5000. So I'll just write it out as the square root of 5,000. But once again, you could just know that that's gonna turn into plus 5,000. And that equals D3 squared. Well, D3 squared is just squaring the square root of 6,800, so same thing as here and here. I'll write it out. 6,800 quantity squared. These are gonna cancel, so I just get 6,800. And 1,800 plus 5,000 does equal 6,800. So I know that this is a right triangle, which means if we go back to the original question, it is, did your friend run the play correctly? Well, yes they did, because they had to have made a turn at a 90 degree angle, a right angle, in order to make this play correctly, and they did just that, right here, this is our right angle. So anyway, I know that my friend ran the play correctly, and now I'm done.